back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Rachel and I'm the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Today is Friday and I have a thrift flip for you. It's a little bit of a different thrift flip because it's one item that I took apart and made six projects with. So uh, you'll see in the video exactly what I'm talking about and I hope you really like it. I can't wait for you to see them. And uh, if you do enjoy the video, I would really appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here and you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel so you can follow along with all the craziness that goes on here in my kitchen at the cottage. So uh, if you hit the little notification bell, you won't miss anything. And I would love to know at the end what your favorite of all the projects were. So please comment below and let me know. So without further ado, let's get into my projects for today's video. For today's video, I am taking apart this old magazine rack and I'm going to be using it to make six different fall projects with. The first thing I needed to do was all the prep work though. And once I got the whole thing taken apart, I had to take all the little screws out that were left and then take the little piece of wood off of the bottom part, which took me a second, and then get all the nails out of that. And then once that was done, I had to uh, begin gluing the uh, ladder portions, the rung portions of these back together. So here I am just putting a little bit of wood glue in each of the holes and then uh, gluing all those rungs back into place and then squeezing it really tight to make sure that it's got a good uh, adhesion. And then taking my shop towel and cleaning off the excess glue. So this takes a second uh, and then I just set those aside to dry and then move on to the next part. So next up is filling holes and for that I'm using uh, Durham's water putty and I'm just mixing it up kind of like a paste and I'm going around and just filling all of the holes with this. So there was uh, one hole by the top uh, that was didn't go all the way through so I just put a little water putty in that. The only hole I didn't fill was the one on the very top because I'm going to be leaving that to hang these with. So then I took on the back side and put some masking tape down just so that the water putty had a place to stop when I was pushing it in. And I put water putty on all the holes and then used my scraper to push it down in there and then level it back out. Now the one thing I have noticed with water putty is you definitely want to leave a little bit extra on the uh, outside surface just because it does shrink a little bit. Once the water putty was completely dry, I took everything outside and with 220 grit sandpaper on my rotary sander, just uh, sanded everything smooth and sanded all that excess water putty off of the pieces. Once that was done, my prep work was complete and then it was actually time to move on to creating. For project one, I am creating what I call a miniature blanket ladder. Now, obviously, I'm going to have two of these that are going to be basically the same, just different finishes. But these are so cute to hang on the wall, and you could use them for napkins or little doilies, or if you wanted to hang your jewelry from them, whatever. So I am painting this first one with DIY's crinoline, and I did go in here with two good even coats of paint uh, to get these completely covered. Once that was done, I took some 220 grit sandpaper. I laid some paper down just to kind of protect my uh, drop cloth underneath and I began sanding these. I wanted them to be nice and smooth and I also wanted them to be distressed and so that is why I'm sanding them. Then I took my damp shop towel and went over them again just to really clean them up and get rid of any of that sanding dust and also to do a little bit more distressing. Then it's on to the finishing touches and for that I'm using a transfer by Redesign by Prima and this one is called dried wildflowers. So once I cut it out, I the piece that I wanted, I went ahead and cut it into two separate pieces so that I could use one part on one side and one part on the other. 
So once that was done, I peeled off the backing and just began applying the transfer. And as you can see, it's a pretty simple process. You just lay the transfer down, uh, you uh, rub it in with that transfer stick, and then slowly peel back the piece of vellum. Now, when you have pieces that wrap around, I like to start with the wrapped part first and then kind of work my way around to the front. It makes things just a little bit easier. Once that piece was done, I moved on to the other side and placed my transfer down and went through the same process to get that one uh, adhered as well. I love using transfers to dress up pieces. It's so nice to have something that looks like a hand painted piece of art without actually having to hand paint art onto your pieces. Once that was done, I decided I needed a little something on the other side. So I took a piece that I'd cut off and just added that to uh, the other transfer. The nice thing is the transfers are very easy to layer. Once that was done, it was on to sealing my piece. And for that, I am just using one good even coat of DIY's Big Top. And then this piece is done. Project two is going to follow the same basic steps as project one. For this one, I am giving it two good even coats of DIY's paint called Aviary. This is my favorite green by DIY. I absolutely love it. It is such a great color, not only for fall, but for spring and Christmas as well. Now DIY paint is water-based and so if you're ever in need of being able to move your paint around a little bit easier, just keep a Mr. Bottle handy and spray your piece and that will help. Once both coats of paint were done and completely dry, it was on to sanding and distressing. Now, I know you couldn't see, but my first coat of paint was out of a very old can that had some chunks in it. And so part of this process was removing the chunky bits of paint that were um, stuck on the piece in places. So I smoothed out my paint, got that all done, went in with my damp shop towel and did a little bit more distressing by hand and also cleaned my piece really well. Uh, it's very important if you do any sanding and you're planning to put transfers down before you seal your piece that you wipe off any sanding dust because that will make your transfer not want to stick to your piece. So then it was on to putting my transfers on. I am using the same transfer set as I did for the other one, the dried wildflower set by Redesign by Prima. And again, just um, adhering the transfer down with the transfer stick, peeling back that piece of vellum as I go and making sure everything gets um put down in place exactly where I want it. And then once it's done and the vellum sheet is completely removed, I do go over these really well and burnish them in by hand with my fingers. And basically you're just going over it really well to make sure that there aren't any air bubbles or lifted places. Uh, and it also helps remove the little, I think they call it a halo that is normally around all the transfers. Once my first transfer is done on the one side, I do the same thing as I did on the other uh, blanket ladder and just go cut another piece of this transfer out um, and use that to do the other side. Now, I apologize. My phone ran out of batteries before I was completely done with this step. So you'll get a little bit of it, but I think you get the point. Uh, it's just really easy putting those transfers on and what a beautiful uh addition they make to just about anything. Once they were down and I was done with them, it was on to sealing this piece. And again, I'm just using DIY's big top and giving this one good even coat and then it is finished.
Project three is the bottom of the magazine rack. And for this, it's just a very thin piece of wood, but I am going in with DIY's Summer Crush, which is an absolutely gorgeous color for fall, for summer, for spring even. I just love this orange. And I give this two good even coats of paint front and back. And then I'm ready to move on to the next step, which is, you guessed it, sanding. Again, I just want to make sure that this is nice and smooth. And I did just a little bit of distressing, nothing too um, major or anything. And then I gave it a good wash and set it aside. Now for part of this project, we're going to be using a decoupage paper by Roy Cycled called Heirloom Pumpkins. And I saw this trick a while ago online and I wanted to try it. So usually when I do decoupage paper, I paint my piece white so that the decoupage paper really shows up well on the background. Well, for this, I wanted to actually cut the pumpkins out. And so what I had seen is you just paint the backs of your piece and then cut them out. And I thought that's kind of nice because it'll actually make the tissue paper a little more stiff and easier to use with the scissors. So that's what I did. I flipped the paper upside down. I painted the pumpkins on the back side and then I cut them out and it did make things a little bit easier. I also decided to use some of these leaves uh, in my piece. I tried cutting them apart a little differently and I really didn't like any of that white showing so I ended up just cutting the leaves out completely. Then I took each individual leaf and set them down first because I wanted to layer this with the pumpkins on top of the leaves. So after I'd kind of figured out where everything needed to go, I set three of my leaves down and then actually I think four. And then I took the big white pumpkin and gave it a good coat of liquid patina on the back of it and placed that over the leaves. Then it was on to the green pumpkin and for that I just did half of it to start because I wanted to be able to tuck some of the leaves underneath it. So I painted half of it with liquid patina, laid it down, flattened it out, and then painted the back of my leaves and placed them underneath the pumpkin. And then once I was done with that, I finished uh, placing the liquid patina on the green pumpkin and laying it down. Then it was on to finishing the front of this piece. And for that, I just went ahead and used the liquid patina to coat the entire front of this piece. Liquid patina can be used as a finishing coat. It just doesn't have quite the durability of the DIY big top. Then it was on to the final step and I apologize my shoulder kind of got in the way of some of this but I am using IOD's typesetting stamp set and I uh, spelled out the word fall and I placed that on the piece and then I took a little stamp set I had found on Amazon several years ago and uh, made the word happy and placed that above the fall so that my sign says happy fall. Then it's time for sealing and I used DIY's big top and I went over the front side again as well. Project four and five are very similar, just different finishes. But before I could get started, I wanted to go over where the water putty was with some shellac just to keep it from bleeding through into my paint. It takes a while for that water putty to dry completely. And as it does, it can actually uh, make a mark in your paint. Now I'm, for this one, I'm going in with two good even coats of the DIY color called Farm Fresh, 
one of my newer favorite colors. Normally for fall, I use Skeleton Key, but this time I decided to try Farm Fresh. So I, like I said, I gave it two good even coats front and back. And once that was complete and it was completely dry, I went in with my 220 grit sandpaper and just gave it a light sanding. I did a little bit of distressing, nothing too big or anything. And then I cleaned this up with a damp shop towel and moved on to the next step. Now for this and for the other sign, I am making stencils using my Cricut machine. There are stencils you can purchase. I've seen them on Amazon if you want, um, or if you have a machine, you can make one. For this one, I actually bought uh, the, the file for this on Etsy uh, and then just printed it out with my uh, Cricut machine. Once the stencil was laid down, I am going in with a good even coat of DIY's crinoline. And I, for that, I'm just using a makeup sponge I bought at the Dollar Tree. Uh, and my fingers get a little bit dirty, but for me, this has been the easiest and best way to stencil. So I just kind of go over it with two good even coats of the crinoline. And while the paint is still just a little bit wet, I peel back uh, my stencil vinyl and then begin weeding all the teeny weeny little pieces that were left from the stencil. I ended up having to go in because a couple of pieces got missed when uh, the machine was cutting and just fill in a couple little holes. Then it's time for decoration and for that I'm going in with this beautiful transfer set by Redesign by Prima called Classic Peach. So I used one of the bigger flowers at the neck of this uh, sign and just kind of placing that down, pushing the vellum along with my finger underneath and then I had to tuck that little piece of flower around the back of it. Then I took this swag portion and cut it into two so that I would have a little bit longer piece to go along the bottom. And the way I'd cut it, I ended up um, having kind of a little hole. And the nice thing again about these transfers is that they're really easy to layer. So you just have to kind of know where your bottom layer is going to be and set that down and then just build upon it. So I took that first flower, laid it down, down, laid the rest of that little swag portion down and then filled in the hole with the little red flower. I absolutely love how this piece turned out and to seal it I took it outside and gave it a good spray coat of Rust-Oleum 2x clear matte spray just to avoid accidentally smearing my stencil. So for project five, I picked faded burlap as the color and I am giving this uh, piece of wood two good even coats on both sides of DIY's faded burlap. So here I am going in with that second coat, give it a little spritz of water to make it move around a little easier. And once that is done and the paint is dry again, I go in with my 220 grit sandpaper, just like on the last one, and give this a light sanding. I did go ahead and distress this one a little bit more. I just wanted it to have a little bit more of an aged look. Then I wiped it down with my damp shop towel and got it ready for the next steps. For this one, I just wanted it to be simple as far as the stencil went, so it's just the words, Hello Fall, and I stenciled those on it with a DIY's Summer Crush, which is this beautiful orange color. Now keep in mind, all of the DIY products you see me use today can be purchased on my website at www.TheEclecticCottageSpokane.com. Once I'm done with the stencil, I just pull that uh, stencil paper back and then I weed out the letters, getting rid of all the pieces that aren't needed. 
Once that is done, it's time for some adornment. And for that, I'm using this same stencil set as before, or transfer set, excuse me, as before. And I am just cutting out a few more pieces of that and getting them kind of figured out. It took me a minute to uh, decide where I wanted everything and which pieces I wanted to use. But once I did that, I just began laying each piece down in order and uh, just one at a time, laying them down using the transfer stick or a lot of the time my fingernails to get those adhered to the piece of wood and then peeling up that vellum as I go. The great thing about these transfers is that they can just be cut to size. So like this one, if you decide you only want a piece of one, you can absolutely just cut them apart and use the parts that you want. Once I was done with this and got all the rest of the transfers down, I did take this outside and also gave it one good even coat of a Rust-Oleum matte clear and then it was finished. My sixth and final project for this magazine rack is basically the handle. And I had a little strip of wood that I had kept from it, but the strip was so short that I ended up actually going into my box of rungs and uh, spindles and pulled out this round dowel like rung and used it instead because it was almost the same exact length as the handle. So what I'm doing here is just giving each of these pieces two good even coats of DIYs paint in the color aviary going in with my 220 grit sandpaper, giving them a good sand, and then going in with my shop towel and adding a little bit of distressing and getting them cleaned up. Once that's done, I did go ahead and seal them with one good even coat of Big Top on both the handle portion and that bottom dowel rod. Now, the addition I had to make was this fabric. So this is just some plain muslin that I've had in my stash for a while. And I decided I wanted to make a sign with the handle portion. So I am cutting out a square piece of muslin about the size of the dowel and the handle length. And uh, just kind of making sure my lines are nice and straight, marking out my edges with a pencil, and then going in and cutting that square out. Once I have my square cut, I am going to lay out my pieces again, and I ended up changing my mind and shortening this square up just a little bit. And once I did that, then it was time to glue my pieces down. So I'm using my tight bond, quick and thick, spreading a light layer on the back of the handle portion and then pressing that down onto the fabric. I then had to take my scissors and cut around the hole for the handle. And then I took the dowel and added a little bit of tight bond to that as well and glued it onto the bottom of the fabric. Once that was finished, I had already created a stencil for it. So I am just adhering the, my stencil uh, vinyl down to the fabric directly. And once that's done, I am free to go in and begin stenciling. So for this, I am using the colors DIY's aviary uh, for the wording. And for the pumpkin itself, I'm going to go in with DIY's summer crush. I had to put a little strip of masking tape because I had uh, cut my stencil vinyl just a little too short so I, and I didn't want to get any extra on the fabric. Anyway, once that's done, it's time to pull that stencil vinyl back off of the fabric and then go in and weed my words, which means taking the little pieces out of the centers that are left. And once that's done, I did take this outside and give it a really good coat of the clear matte spray and then it was finished.
So what did you guys think of my magazine rack transformation today? I hope you liked it and the projects that I made with it. Uh, it's kind of fun taking those old magazine racks and doing something with them. Of course, they have to be the right style of magazine rack. Anyway, um, I so appreciate be you being here. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel so you can follow along again on all my craziness here at the cottage. And if you hit the little notification bell, it'll let you know when I upload new content. Uh, I'd also love to know which of the projects for today was your favorite. So please remember to comment below and let me know. And just another reminder, if you need any of the products you saw me use uh, from DIY today, they can be purchased on my website at www.theeclecticcottagespokane.com. For Tuesday, I have a sneaking suspicion that it's going to be a thrift haul. Uh, I have been working diligently trying to get a dresser sanded down. I started my woodblock pumpkins this past week and none of that has panned out quite yet. And so um, I do believe we're gonna be going out on a junk run on Sunday. So that will probably be Tuesday's video. So I hope you'll join me for that. Uh, and until then, I hope you have a super great rest of your week and a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much for being here. I'll see you Tuesday. Bye.